You notice anything behind me at all? Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> what, <Malone>? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was alone. <laughs> I, I was wondering how long it was going to take you to figure. I was going to give you the whole interview to try to figure out whose jersey that was before yours. <laughs> that's hysterical. Dude, so listen, man, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, I have a ton of questions for you. I'm going to rip through them because I know that you're, you're very busy. Are you very busy? You're fine. you're fine. I mean, there's nothing really going on. I already got my workout in, so I'm good to go. Okay. Uh, I want to know the first thing, man. Tell me about this birthday parade. Was it what, your friend and your brother that did this to you? Uh, so it was my brother or brother, sister's sister and my mom and dad so i didn't want one um because i'm 32 i don't think i need a birthday parade so i think obviously going through what we're going through right now it's good for like your parents uh you know kids i think that's so they can really enjoy it uh for me though i mean they outdid it uh with the fire trucks and the police the police officers and um with the sounds that the sounds going, the sirens going. So, I mean, it was, it was great. At the end of the day, I really appreciate what they did for me, but it was uh, absolutely funny. And well, in uh, the moment, in the moment, you looked like you looked pissed. You looked like how I looked like back in the day when my parents would have, you know, the Outback servers come out and sing happy birthday to me. Was that your initial reaction? Were you angry? And then it kind of, you kind of realized it was a good thing. I was mad. I would say I was mad. Not like I wasn't mad. I was just embarrassed. Uh, and not, I don't know what I was. I just didn't want one. I just felt like, listen, guys, I know you guys want to see me. We all want to see each other, but you know, let's, I don't really need a parade. Let's just save it for someone else. And, but cause we did one for my mom, but obviously she didn't have the fire trucks or the police officers going through the neighborhood with their sirens on. So um, it was funny at the end of the day. Uh, that video was great. My brother posted on Twitter. If you notice, uh my little nephew augie was on the scooter if you didn't notice if you didn't watch it he tumbles on the scooter i didn't he, see that oh it's great so you gotta slow it down and uh he's on the scooter with his mom and he just tumbles right off the scooter right before the parade so you gotta rewatch the video it's uh pretty funny what tipped you off was it the sirens or how did you know to initially come outside for the birthday parade my fiance told me it was supposed to be a surprise, but she told me that they were having a parade and I know you didn't want one. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you anyways. Uh, so that's how that happened, but they went through with it, whatever. It turned out to be a really good, a really good gesture. And it, it turned out to be fun and got to see everyone. And um, the cousins, well, I got to see all my little nephews and, you know, my son got to see his, you know, his friends and, you know, I got to see my mom and dad. So I haven't seen any, I, that was probably the first time or second time I seen everyone. So it was kind of nice just to see everyone. And uh, it was a really nice thing for them to do actually. So what's the, uh, what's the strangest or weirdest thing you've done during quarantine to try to kill time? Have you tried to pick up like any new hobbies or anything? Cause I, I heard you're just really, really bored. Yeah, I haven't done nothing. I don't know how to do yard work. I don't know how to plant. I don't know how to mulch. Uh, there's one thing I tried to do. Well, I did do is I went up to Home Depot, got a power washer, empty out my whole garage and power wash my whole garage. But two days later, it was a shit show. <laughs> but to say the least, I don't, I am not cutting my grass. I'm actually still hiring people to cut my grass, which is really bad and fertilizing. And you know, the odd thing is, I got a funny story. So I'm, I went outside to give my lawn care people some waters yesterday. And they're like, you know, we've been putting fertilizer down. Have you been hydrating your grass? And I'm like, was I supposed to? So that's where I'm at right now. So uh, so we have a sprinkler system that was not turning on. So I didn't, they just reminded me I had one because I forgot when I came back to turn back my service on because you have to turn it off so the pipes don't freeze so yeah that's where i'm at right now so i'm kind of embarrassed about the whole situation and i'm not happy about it dude you got the pressure washer though you pressure wash the garage like that's some manly stuff right there you got to feel good about that yeah like i i felt good about myself i organized the garage i moved the shelves around uh make sure anthony we have little um roller hockey tiles in the back so get them all situated so you can shoot into the garage 
Um, so yeah, we got that all dialed in, but um, that's the only thing I've done so far. So it hasn't been that good. So how quickly after all hell broke loose, did you go back to St. Louis? Uh, I gave it a week and a half a bit. Uh, when they said they're, I would say two weeks, they said they were going to, we'll see you in two weeks. Cause obviously we didn't know what was going on at the time. All we knew was a virus that came to this, came to the U S and it's kind of taken over and people are getting sick, whatever. We knew that whole nine yards. So, um, it wouldn't be a good idea to fill 20,000 people in the comeback stadium. And so as it progressed and day by day, day by day by day, it just keep getting worse, kept getting worse. And then state by state started closing. And uh, that's when I figured it was kind of bad news. So I figured I'd be close, go home, see my kid, be close to him, be close to my mom and dad and um, hang out with them until we figure out what's, what's our next plan and what, what do we attack next. So where are you at right now? Obviously, there's a lot of things floated out. It seems like the NHL really, really, really wants to finish up the regular season and the season, which I think is awesome to see. Have you been been, been paying attention to any of the plans? And uh, do you think that the rest of the season is going to happen? I have been paying attention. I honestly don't know. Uh, I think for me, if I'm being honest, and I think – I don't know if people have been honest with themselves or not, but I think the most important thing is health. Um, you gotta, you gotta focus on that because what if we do come back and someone does get sick and then we're back to square one. So, uh, do I want to finish the season? Absolutely. I think we have a really good team. I think we have a really good chance of obviously winning the Stanley cup, but I think it would just be odd if you want to stand the cup, there's no fans in the stands and you can't, you don't get your celebrate with the fans. You don't get to celebrate a parade. You don't get to have your day with the cup because you can't be around friends and family. Um, so those things kind of kick in, which is a big part of the whole thing of winning the Stanley Cup. I think it's the best trophy to win in all sports. So, Well, uh, don't worry. Just so you know, if you win and we're not allowed, like, inside to watch you, we're going to find you. Like, we'll follow you around town six feet apart. Like, it's not going to go uncelebrated. Don't worry. We'll stalk you. We'll do yeah. everything we need to do to let you know that we appreciate you bringing the cup home. For sure, 100%. But wouldn't you rather be a part of it and be close to us and be a parade and be a family? Because I think when you when you go on a long run, you know, in, was it, 04 you guys won? Uh, when you go on a long run, you 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 get we all be, we all come together as a family. Uh, fans, you know, your teammates, you know, everyone around you that's supporting you. And you just want to cherish those moments with everyone that have been on the journey with you and the grind and uh, the stress and, you know, the anxiousness, the anxiety. You want to go through all that with them. So I don't know. I want to play um, only because our team's good and we have a chance. <laughs> and uh, we have, you know, it just be unfortunate to be a lot of what ifs, right? You know, a lot of free agents, we traded for Barkley, we traded for Coleman, you know, they, I came in new and there's a lot of new faces in the locker room. It'd just be, you know, obviously if it didn't finish, it'd be like, you know, what if we did this or what if this, but my most important thing is family and everyone staying health. You know, there's kids at home, there's wife pregnant. If we do the offside stuff, like, uh, I think, you know, that I think they need to be closer to your wife or girlfriend that's pregnant. And I think families first, you know, we obviously love what we do, but you got to take caution. And you you got to make sure you're there and support your family through these tough times. And um, so I think that's one of the reasons too. So, I mean, Did you hear just, that by the way, that was me. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's serious. Yeah. Yes. I thought it was me. I've never, I never, I didn't, but I didn't get a message. So yeah, no. Okay. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's where I'm at. I mean, I mean, I'm sure everyone feels the same way. Right. But I think everyone's getting anxious too, to get outside and like get back to normal life. But I feel like if we, if we rush into it, if we actually take our time and look into the situation and focus on what we need to do to get this thing going, let's give it some time here. You know what I mean? Let's not rush into it. Let's 
make sure when the restaurants open up, gyms open up, and slowly start seeing results and results with all these restaurants and, you know, gyms and obviously other businesses that were closed and what's to see the pr progress and go from there. And then if that sees results, then, then we can start moving forward. But I think as of right now, it's just too tough. I think it's too, it's too early still to tell because uh, obviously people are, you know, I was reading the other day, there was another 4,000 cases in New Jersey yesterday. So it's just like, it's, it's, yeah, there's going to be a second wave, you know, we just have to figure out, you know, how, you know, how, how devastating is it going to be? Or can we kind of ride it out and still all be in public? So I, I totally get what you're seeing or what you're saying. You know, most of the stuff I've seen has the NHL, you know, starting in July. So I don't know if that's enough time. It seems like, Hey, you got a couple of months, but you know, either way, it seems like they player safety is going to be number one. And uh, I, I don't think there's going to be fans either way, but, but hopefully you guys are able to kind of finish everything out. Yeah, I don't, uh, it would be, it would just be tough. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the whole situation, but it would just be tough to put, you know, fans at risk. And then, you know, it's just scary now because if you go into a restaurant and you walk out of there and 14 days later you get COVID-19, well, you can sue that restaurant now. So there's going to be a lot of different uh, scenarios going on because you got to, um, you got to write stuff in. You got to make sure you can't sue people when you walk into a restaurant, grocery store, hockey game, basketball game, soccer game. I mean, there's just so much going on. So there's too much risk right now. So yeah. uh, just focus on the task at hand, is which is uh, do the right things. Whatever your state tells you, just do it and uh, apply to it and focus on, you know, getting each state better by the day. So uh, as much as I don't want to be sitting here planted in, in my – you know, house or, you know, can't go and do my job that I love most importantly, especially the, f the most important time of the year is playoff hockey. My favorite time is going on right now. And it's, it's eating me alive that I can't be, you know, put my pads on with these guys and, you know, going to work with them and sweating with them and, you know, trying to win something that we really want to win. And knowing that we have the team and capable of winning the Stanley cup and, you know, what Julian did going out to get Barkley and, and Zach Bogosian and, you know, Blake Coleman, we have all the tools. So it's just, it's frustrating. It's not, obviously we can't blame, we're blaming the pandemic, but you know, that stuff happens in the world. Obviously we didn't see that coming a mile away, but um, it's more, it's frustrating for guys because that's, that's, we worked for all year and then you have 12 games left and then now we can't even, now we're figuring out if we can finish the season. So um, that's the most frustrating thing. And not knowing if I can, I'll be back with these guys next year too. So, and it's the same with the other guys. So I think that's, that's what's really um, irritating to a lot of guys. And that's what, that's where I'm at. But, you know, that's, but I'm all for making sure people are staying safe and making sure we're doing the right things and making sure families are healthy and players, families are healthy. That's the most important thing. Families, everything to me. And for a lot of guys, you know, hockey's just a sport we play and we work hard at it and we dedicate ourselves to it. But when you come home, it's family. And that's where I'm at. Good answer. I like that. Now, I know you've been, you know, asked about winning the cup a million times. So I want to try to get a different take on it from you. Hopefully, if you remember, can you tell me the night you guys won the cup, the last hour of your night that you were awake, can you remember? Do you remember anything about it? Like right before your head hit the pillow, wherever you fell asleep that night, like what, what was like that last 30 minutes or hour like of the night that you won the cup? Well, if I told you what I did, then. Uh, Bad news? I don't know. If people like me. No. <laughs> well, I didn't sleep until six o'clock that night, the next day. So. Oh, my um, God. Um, I think, uh, no, we had a good time. So when we, when we won, you know, it was, the Blues did a great job of making sure our, our families and they chartered out there. So um, Anthony and, and my fiance Francesca got the chance to fly on the plane and charter the day before the game and go to the game. But I flew my mom and dad out there and so they put them up in a hotel and then they flew back the next day. So when we won the cup, we parted in the locker room. I would say till about one thirty two, and then we landed at about 
five. We got to the rink five thirty ish. We partied there till about seven in the morning. Uh, and then we ended up going to OB Clark, some of the players, and then we stayed until about four or five. And then the second wave of players that slept that went home and slept, they came in and brought the Stanley cup and they started partying and, uh, and then we took it to another party that, you know, the Weiss put on. So, uh, it was a long 24 hours, but you know, that's the only green light we get as, you know, if we have, we have a wife and kid at home, that's our green light. So, uh, we got to take advantage of it. Kitten, do you, and this will be a good time. Tell me about, you know, for the people that aren't familiar, familiar with Layla, tell me about what she meant, what she means to you, what she meant to you guys during the cup run. And then I also know that you just did a, a drive by for her birthday, right? Yeah, I did. So uh, I think it was uh, Alex Dean that uh, was that visited her in the hospital. And um, he kind of took it upon his hands of, you know, making sure Colton Perenko too. And I think, it was either one of them. I don't know. And, uh, we knew what she was going through, seeing her and kind of filled us in what she was kind of going through. And, um, throughout the year, we would just, she would come to the games and, uh, you know, they put her on the jumbotron and, you know, we obviously knew what she was fighting and, uh, she just kept being an inspiration throughout the whole year because she kept getting better and better. And, uh, with her kind of cancer she has, it was like she needed the right uh, she needed the right blood type, and um, I think she ended up getting it. And it it was just an amazing story and what she brought to our team. She's uh, full of energy, full of life. I've never seen the girl have a bad day. Uh, for a thirteen year old that has what kind of cancer she had, I mean she literally always had a smile on her face and as players we come home and we get agitated if we don't score we want to lose a streak and her she just never had a bad day and they kind of lit us up a little bit and brought us together as a team because she was so inspirational and uh like i said we just enjoyed hanging out with her mom and dad and um and you kind of just wanted to keep playing for her because, I mean, she was fighting something that uh, some of us kind of, you know, battle, battle it. And she kept battling and she still is to this day, but she's looking pretty and pretty every day. You know, she's, she's back to life. And she looks totally would, different. She looks totally different when I saw the picture of her from her birthday. Yeah, totally different. You know, everything's kind of, she's kind of getting back to normal here, but obviously with the COVID-19, you got to be, careful now it's kind of scary for everyone um but you know she was just a ball of energy that was an inspiration to us players in the locker room that we all looked up to listen let me ask you when, when you're fighting chara and you're and you're actually fighting him is he saying anything to you is he going oh my god not you again is there anything happening because to me chara is like the monster under the bed that i tell my daughter doesn't exist but he actually does exist he scares me. So is there, is he trash talking you at all and saying anything or he just does the fight and you guys just go your separate ways afterwards? Yeah. Like you said, he just does the fight and goes his separate ways. I mean, I see he gets mad for sure. I think that line brawl, I never seen a look in his face that he, I thought he was really going to hurt me uh, <laughs> at, uh, only because of what, you know, C pushed him down with this, pushed him down. And then I have to look at him. He's like, oh, and he was just screaming at me. I never seen him do that, but, you know, he's a well-respected player in the league, and I respect the hell out of Chara. I mean, at 44 or whatever, how old he is, he's he's fighting me. He sticks up for his teammates. He does it all. So um, that's a player, that's an ultimate teammate that you want on your team. Uh, his his work ethic, you know, his off the ice, on the ice, his leadership, um, that's why he's so respected around the league and his teammates in Boston. That's why he was there for so long, and they brought a cup back. So uh, obviously fighting him is – it's not the easiest thing, but you just got to find ways to, uh, you know, get your teammates going and whatever you need to spark. So for me, I'm just a guy, I'm probably not going to win majority of my fights. I just got to hang on and, uh, you know, just show up. And what's, is that your, what's your strategy with Chara? Is it just, just to hang in there and not die? In there, I mean, he, you know, he's going to hit you. You're not going to reach him unless you really connect with them and get inside. So, uh, you just got to find ways, find your time, be patient, and uh, hopefully connect. 
Who's famous? Who's more famous in St. Louis? You or the St. Lunatics, not including Nelly? <laughs> I would say Nelly and the St. Lunatics. Well, I St. Lunatics are – oh, I guess if you don't include Nelly, maybe me. Yeah. I don't know. Like Murphy Lee. I mean, like, I don't know the other guys, but, like, I, I got to put you above, above Murphy Lee and the other St. Lunatics, if I may. Isn't Nelly's brother in the St. Lunatics, too? Is he? I didn't know that. I think so. He's a small guy. See, you should – this is the stuff that you know. See, I didn't know that. I this think stuff. so. I forget his name. I just, a lot, I'll, he's just Nelly's brother, and that's really all that matters as long as the check's clear. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Pat, who – is this during – is because of COVID-19, is this why you have an Instagram page now because you're so bored? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, just I, – I got rid of mine, I would say, last year when I was in St. Louis, right before uh, – uh, during the season, I was having a rough year, and I was just like, you know what? You know, the St. Louis fans were all over me. I was tired of looking at it, and every post I would have, there would just be an ignorant comment. So I was just kind of like, whatever. I'm just going to delete the whole thing and start over. And then I actually didn't really miss it. I didn't miss it at all, but now I'm back at it. And, um, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, you know, the following thing. So I forgot how to do it. Francesca kind of runs my page. So just trying to build the brand up, uh, see what I can do here. And that's Patty Maroon on Instagram. And so you don't run your dog's Instagram account either, though. I do not. That's Francesca. She does an amazing job. So <laughs> She's handling so all, the, all, the, all the Maroon's uh, 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 social media, doesn't she? She does handle every single one of them. So, um yeah, it's fun. I, I actually enjoy it because there's so much contact on Instagram. I love golf, so I follow every golf page player, and uh, I try to work on my game on Instagram. I see all the – what they do, the technique and stuff. So, you know, just trying Dude, to get better. Tell me about – tell what you can share about going out and playing 18 holes with John Daly. What was that like? Uh, it was an amazing time. Uh, I was lucky enough. Uh, Luke Voigt invited me. Um, and a couple of his teammates, uh, were out there and is he, daily like wasted when you show up already. Like he's already partying when we're when you're ready to start. No, he wasn't drinking that. He had one drink that day. Uh, he brought his son, little Johnny and, uh, he was an amazing guy. He's stand up guy, uh, funnier in hell. Um, Really good golfer, as you know, but I mean, he was just a great guy all around. His son's a stud, so um, it was a f it was a fun day. I would love to do it again, though, when he's uh, putting them back. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, Pat, I want to know when did when did the celebration of the Stanley Cup stop, and when when did the realization hit you that you were going to have to start looking for for a new team? Um, uh, I mean, the first week week and a half two weeks you kind of you're doing a lot of things you're around guys and you're drinking and uh so the first two weeks was probably kind of like after that you kind of like okay I'm exhausted so that kind of when it settled down um and then obviously free agent hit July 1st and I didn't know what was going to happen uh, I talked to my agent a little bit here and there but um we had some teams, but I mean, it came all the way down to what is it, two weeks before training camp? I signed with Tampa, so or three weeks. So um, it was a stressful summer for sure because uh, I didn't know kind of where I was going at the time. I I just told my agent where I wanted to go. Uh, I want to go to a contender at it. I want to go to a team that has a chance to win again. Uh, when you get that feeling. And I said, I want to go to a team that I can help any way I can. Uh, so we kind of we kind of check, checked off the boxes of kind of what I wanted and where I wanted to go. And I had some teams knocking on my door right at the right at the end of everything. And um, and finally, we got something done with uh, Julian and John and um, and the Lightning organization that we thought was the best fit for me. And I thought I can come in and help the team and uh, play a good role in the organization and uh, maybe play up and down the lineup. I can play on the fourth line and be painted there and uh, find a role there. So I thought that was the best fit and 
Uh, they've given me oppor every opportunity this year to kind of play my game and play on the power play on the second unit. So uh, it's been a fun year and um, it's been a great fit. What's been the worst thing a coach has ever said to you? Because uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of guys on the show who played for Tortorella, so they have a lot of <laughs> stories, a lot a lot of stuff about that, about him really breaking down people. Anybody ever said anything to you that it almost made you just quit hockey? Well, I almost did, yeah, Greg Gilbert, but I guess I can't really say it on TV. But uh, <laughs> when I got sent home from the Flyers organization uh, when I was in my third year there. Uh, me and Greg Gilbert had it out there, and I said some nasty things. He said some nasty things. But I guess when I retire, please call me, and I'll get back on the podcast, and I'll tell you all the stories. Okay. <laughs> and listen, one last question. You ate ravioli out of the cup. Did you eat anything else? And w Would you recommend any other dishes to be eaten out of the cup, uh, hopefully when you guys bring it home again? Well, that's a famous tradition in uh, St. Louis, toasted ravioli. So that's a big thing in St. Louis, and – Francesca's family owns Charlie Judo's here in town and well-respected restaurant in town, Italian restaurant. And they kind of, you know, homemade toaster ravs invented it. So they, that was a tradition of eating uh, toaster ravs out of it. So people were loving it, gigging it and uh, whatever. I think what's, uh, what's known in Tampa. I don't know, Cubans or something. I don't, not, nothing, nothing too sexy. Like I have, I've been trying to think since I saw the video, what we put in there. And I actually have, I have no idea. Like, I don't know, a Caesar salad. I don't know what works in there. Well, I don't know. So, I mean, I ate cereal with my son out of it, but. That's cool. Uh, uh, you just got to find a tradition of what's in Tampa Bay. Like what, what's a famous food in Tampa Bay? Like what's a famous restaurant that they, they are so known for one dish i would put it in there and eat it out of it that's okay. what or so like toaster ravs is a huge appetizer dish so any time someone came up you can't do it now because it's COVID 19 but exactly someone, someone would come up take a picture with it grab it dip it in the sauce and eat it out of the cup so i thought it was a cool idea uh we brought it to her family's restaurant that's where we came up with the idea and then we pushed it and the famous uh Lasorto table, Tommy Lasorto table, because him and her grand, him and her grandpa are best friends, so they named a table after him. So that's where we wow. put the Stanley Cup, and that's where people would come in, take a picture, take a toasted wrap, dip in the sauce. And it. So <laughs> I thought it was cool for everyone, a chance to feel like they were a part of it, and uh, and uh, get a chance to take a cup of the Stanley Cup with toasted wraps in it. That was awesome. So um, when you're eating the cereal with with your son Anthony, the guy who's a, the, the handler of the cup, right? Because there's a guy that, that's supposed to be there with it at all times, right? Yeah. Is he, do you give him a spoon? Is he eating the cereal with you guys? Or he's just kind of just off in the background playing on his phone? Yeah, he's doing his own thing. So they don't really bother you. They're really good people. And uh, they're always there next to your, they're next to your hip. But um, I think it's just more to like, okay, can you carry the Stanley Cup? Because I think it's, it's, it gets exhausting after from nine to uh, midnight um it's just people want to hold it people want to drink out of it people want to do this and you're holding it you're holding it and um they want a picture with you they want to do and so it's just by three o'clock you're just like get this thing away from me because i just don't want to be you know but you probably I, got the last you probably got the last Stanley cup celebration where people are going to be able to do that now i don't think you're going to be able to touch it Unless, like, you have your own gloves and a mask now for years to come. No, I don't think so, really. I no. don't know. At least this year. We'll bring hand sanitizer. <laughs> 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 All right, deal. Deal. As long as you're – listen, you know what? If the, if the cup is in Tampa Bay, I'm not worried about getting sick, okay? I'll, I'll eat and share and drink with everybody. We'll worry about that after. That's the whole part of it, and I think that's where the tradition falls and – with this stuff going on, hopefully we can go back to normal here soon. But I just, you know, that's a huge tradition, you know, like when you're with your fans and, you know, if you're, you bring the cup to the bar and they're with you and they want to drink out of it, give them a sip, you know, that's, that's what we kind of did. So, uh, I don't know. I just, I guess it's bring hand sanitizer. Don't touch your face kind of thing, but you can drink out of someone. I don't know. <laughs> Well, listen, Pat Maroon, I'm a big fan. As you can tell, I hopefully, hopefully I get to wear 
This, oh, but is it called a jersey or a sweater, by the way? Both. Okay. All right. Some people will say something different every time. So right. I say jersey, but I didn't want to offend anybody because I heard you call it a sweater one time. So uh, I think equipment managers call it a sweater. Okay. Maybe that's the classiest way to say it. But you're good with jersey. I'm good with jersey. All right. Well, hopefully I get to wear this to a game, man. We love having you on the team. Hoping, hopefully we can finish out the season, bring home the cup, man. Congrats on all your success, and thanks for taking time for doing this today, man. You did a great job. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I feel the same way. Hopefully we can uh, give these fans, you know, what they've been waiting for these last few years. So uh, hopefully we get back, to, uh, get back to playing here soon, and uh, I hope everyone's staying safe. You too, you and your family are staying safe. So thanks for having me on. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate it, man. See ya. See ya.